the holidays are supposed to be merry and bright, right? But for many of us at home, our experience is way different than that. <laughs> and I'm going to come to you today with some tips about how to manage clutter around the holidays so that you can enjoy being in your space more this time of year. We've got to talk about what clutter is and how it affects us, how to manage what clutter comes in, and then lastly, how to get rid of stuff that we already have. I want you to close your eyes and take a deep breath. And maybe just kind of do a little virtual walk around your home and really think about, are the spaces how you want them to be? Are they tidy and organized? Can you find things that you're looking for? Is there too much stuff? Do you need a few things? This is the perfect time of year to really think about how we're living in our spaces because a lot of times we're going to be inviting people to them and it kind of makes us reflect on a little bit of how we're currently living in our space because we all just kind of get normal patterns and habits and routines. We kind of get used to the way things are, but it's not always how we want things to be. Most of us have closets that need to be cleared out, drawers that need to be organized, doom piles that need to be addressed. And I know we all have a lot on our plates this time of year, but it's actually a really good time to kind of think about sorting through and going through some of those things because we're going to be heading into a new year and you really kind of get to think about how you want to live and be in your space. Do you want your home to be a place that energizes you or relaxes you? Is it a place where there's a million projects or is it a place where you can go and just be with your family? So really thinking about how you're going to live in your space for the next year, this is a great time to do it because we're gonna be bringing out holiday decor. We might be getting spaces ready for company. So you're gonna kind of be interacting with your space in a different way than you might normally. So it's a great opportunity to think about keeping some things, getting rid of some things. And do you like the things that you already have? If you've got to take a few things off your mantle or clear a shelf off to put up some Christmas decor, really think about if you want that stuff to go back. It's also a great opportunity to think about what things that you want to add to your Christmas list if you're going to maybe be getting rid of some things. So the two main things that we're going to talk about today are how to manage clutter coming in your home and how to get rid of clutter that you already have. One of the biggest tips I can give you about managing clutter is to be very discerning about what comes in your space. And I'm going to kind of gear this a little bit towards the holidays, right? Because that's our time of year. Be really mindful about the gifts that you're asking for, or if you maybe have some traditional gift exchanges, those are kind of some of the things we're going to talk about, maybe changing up a little bit. I don't know how my mom's going to feel about this, but I'm going to call her out. <laughs> so she is a wonderful gift giver. She is a delightful hostess. Her home is decked out for every season and she loves to shop and she's good at it. I had to draw a boundary a few years ago and say like, I love a good Santa Claus tea towel, but I don't have the space in my home to store seasonal items. I live in an old house. I don't have a garage. I don't have a basement. I don't have an extra pantry. And so for me, those were not the thing that is important to me to have Santa Claus tea towel. Would it be nice? Yes. Is it cute? For sure. But for me, the stress of finding a place for it, managing it and packing it up every season isn't as important. So I kind of had to set a boundary with my mom and just say, like, I can't really handle any more things like that coming in. And maybe you have a thing. Maybe your mom gets you a specific figurine every year, or maybe somebody gets you um, a new set of glasses every, whatever the thing is, maybe thinking about having some of these conversations with family around gift giving. And I think it's interesting. These are the people that we love the most, but we're so afraid of offending them or setting a boundary or what they'll think about what we have to say about the gifts that they give us. There's definitely polite ways to have these conversations, but it's your home. 
for that 30 minutes when your mom comes in your kitchen or on the holidays and doesn't see a Santa Claus tea towel, like that's not the end of the world. We should be able to have these conversations with our family. Another thing that comes up, especially like with like group gift giving, a lot of times like those are lower ticket items that really don't add a lot of quality to our life. So maybe thinking about maybe making them useful things like games or gift cards or forgo gifts altogether and perhaps think about an advice exchange. So maybe like one big lesson or takeaway you've learned this year. And maybe that's what you share instead of stuff or a memory that somebody doesn't know in your family. Those are things you can kind of do. We don't have to give gifts. It's they're nice to get, but if it's a stressful thing, it's not always a comfortable conversation to have, but you may be the one to initiate it in your family. Along those lines, setting budgets is a great way to kind of limit the amount of stuff coming in. And you can say things like, I'm only going to spend $50 or, you know, maybe you're not ready for that conversation for your family this year, but just like this year, I want to talk about what our gift exchange looks like. And I would like to open the floor to different ways of doing it. You are a vital member of your family and you are allowed to initiate those conversations no matter where you fall. If you're a matriarch, if you're a patriarch, if you're a cousin, you're allowed to initiate those conversations with your family. So I have my handy dandy list here. I'm gonna be checking it twice because I wanna make sure that I don't miss things. So one thing to think about also is the quality of items you're bringing in. This time of year, there's so many affordable things that we can get for decor. So I think of like the Target entryway, like the three and five dollar thing. But are those things gonna last? Do they make you feel good? Will they, you know, add to the clutter? Or, you know, could you maybe save for a higher quality piece that's gonna last a little bit longer? Maybe a glass or a ceramic thing. And Another thing to do is maybe we could get that impulse to shop and to buy those little pieces of decor. Maybe save up and save for an experience for your family. Maybe you take your family to a holiday themed putt-putt or a lights walk, or instead of putting those dollars towards stuff, put your dollars toward experiences. Those are really the things that people are gonna remember for the most part. I think especially when we go all out, decorate our homes. It's hard for people to pick up on the individual things. If those things make you happy, like I want you to have that. I'm not saying that you can't deck your house out from wall to wall of Christmas. Like if that lights you up, do it. But be mindful in how you're doing it and how much you're adding. Along those same lines, where I want you to think about taking inventory of what you already have before or you bring more stuff in for the holiday. So as you're pulling your boxes out of the basement or the attic or your storage unit or whatever, really kind of take inventory of what you have and say like, do I need, if I buy $100 more stuff this year, I got another tote. Do I have room for another tote? So really kind of taking inventory of what you have. So to wrap up, I want you to really be discerning about things coming in your environment. Set budgets, have difficult conversations, and be mindful about the quality of items that you're bringing in and take inventory of what you already have. Next, we're gonna talk about how to get rid of some clutter heading into the holidays. This is a great time of year to take inventory of what you already have and see if you actually need it. So some great ways to kind of start moving things out of your home is to have donation boxes that are easily accessible for you. This is like a paper bag, just kind of have one sitting in every room maybe. And as you're in those spaces, start to drop things in the donation bags. When they're full, get them out of your house and donate them. This is a great time of year to be donating items. So many people are looking for things to upcycle or um, maybe they're on a budget too for decor for this time of year. And it's a great time to get it into the stores so it can go to places that it needs to go. If you're looking to get rid of some things or you're open to getting rid of some things, let a family member come shop in your basement. When I was younger, I had so much fun in my 20s, like going through my mom's decor, things that she was willing to let go of. So if you know some young people in your life that are kind of just getting started, invite them to come check out and shop in your basement. 
You can also leave stuff on your front lawn with a free sign. You would be amazed at what people take. You don't even have to go to the thrift store to donate your items. This might be a little controversial, but it's okay to get rid of gifts that people gave you that you don't like. Let's say you're in a gift raffle and you get some cheap plasticky, I don't know, whatever. And you're like, this is not for me. Put it right in the donation pile. Take it to your office at work and leave it on the table and put free. It's okay to never let those things become part of your environment or your space. If something comes to you and you don't want it, it's okay to let it go right back out. I also think this is a good time of year. If you're storing like family heirlooms or you are storing like your memory boxes or kits or things from your family, this is a good time of year to let them go. But I would encourage you to let your family know like, hey, we're gonna be sorting through these things when you come for Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever you do. Don't surprise people because <laughs> there also, there may be an emotional component to that. I'm just saying like, hey, um, I have decided that I no longer want to store these things in my home. Uh, I would love for you to come prepared with a box or a bag or a tote. We're gonna go through them. You can take what you want. After that, I'm going to donate them or sell them or whatever you want to do. So it's a good time of year to kind of, people are already maybe gonna be in your home and people are gonna be a little bit nostalgic and they're gonna maybe appreciate looking back on history or heirlooms or things like that. It's a great time of year to let those go. My last major tip about getting rid of things might be a little bit controversial. It's okay to throw things away. Maybe you don't wanna have your family over to sort through things. Maybe you don't wanna mess with bags. As soon as you encounter something in your house that does not fit or work for you, you can put it in the trash can. I know that might be controversial, but here's the thing. In an ideal world, everything that comes in contact with us would have a second life or a third life. Like that is part of the reduce, reuse, recycle. That's not always the case. Even if you go to like a major thrift store, you look out back, they have a giant dumpster. Stuff's getting thrown away all day, every day. I don't love it. That is why I'm discerning about, for me personally, like what comes in my space. Many of us were raised by parents or grandparents who didn't have a lot and they ingrained in us the idea of preserving and conserving and getting the most life out of things. And that's great. I want you to do that to the best of your ability. But you also have to think about how you're going to move forward. What is best for you? How are you going to live in your space? I'd love it if you made the time to donate and take some things to places and all those things. But if putting it in the dumpster gets it out of your space so that you have the clutter free environment to really enjoy being in your space and rest and relax, then that is more important. And then maybe think about if you have a bigger area, you know, springtime, you want to clean out your garage or your back shed or whatever. Okay. Maybe be a little bit more discerning about where the stuff goes, but I'm giving you permission to throw your stuff away. Maybe I'll get some hate mail for this. I don't know, but <laughs> let's recap. Clutter can affect how you live and function in your space. This is the perfect time of year to think about how you want to live going into the new year. You're already going to be living in your environment a little bit differently around the holidays. It's a perfect time of year to kind of assess what you have going on, what's working, what's not, maybe make some adjustments or changes. It's okay to let things go and it's okay to not bring things in. Those are my biggest tips when it comes to clutter around the holidays.